What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're gonna to talk about the Wizard starter build for Diablo 3, patch 265, season 17, the season of nightmares. This series is like a starter survival guide where it's a lot of theory crafting to kind of walk you through level one, all through the recommendations, all the way to end game and what you would be playing in groups and solo play. First things first, don't complete the challenge rift the week of 513. That's coming up here very shortly. So on Monday, the challenge rift is gonna reset and you wanna save it for the season. So once the season starts, make your seasonal character, then do the challenge rift and you should be good. Claim your bag. A lot of these starter guides, a lot of the best starts revolve around the challenge rift cache. Every season since like season 12 now, so save your challenge rift bag every week that the season starts right make a character and then get your bag once you open up your bag you're going to have some blood shards for wizards you can play it safe here at level one and you can get the bracers there are the ashnagar bracers you can use these basically forever they're going to be useful while leveling once you get your four and six piece, they're just solid overall. You can easily use shields with your passive galvanizing ward. Every class in the game can actually get pox faults. And if you're doing some solo massacre bonuses, this might actually help you. When three or more enemies are around you, you do a 550% multiplier. But what I recommend this season is just to hold on to your bag of blood shards. And at level 33, I would roll sources. You have uh, one out of two chance, you know, if you get a legendary to get an etched sigil and all you have to do is channel arcane torrent disintegrate a rare a frost and they're both really low cost spenders it's basically just free damage for channeling and this is what i would go for probably make sure to check my channel if you don't know how to utilize the challenge rift bag it's like a 20 minute video on how to optimize it for the season with that challenge rift bag we get blood shards and we get a free hope of cane we get to unlock all of our professions upgrade a level 70 weapon and get a free legendary while leveling. Now you can actually equip a level 70 legendary at level one, for instance, but you can run and get your cube and put it in the cube and extract the power and you can be running around with anything that you get. It's pretty slow to run to Seshron at level one. You can wait till you have a movement ability like teleport or something like that. Either way, it's not that impactful, the one to 20 ish leveling process. A lot of times you don't even get the multiplier spell you're looking for to like level 12 or something like that. You don't start the game off with all your abilities anyway. So if you just go level, do the normal strat and then go from there, it's, it's totally fine, right? You can wait till you get some movement. All right, so wizards get a free upgrade at level 70, um, a legendary power to extract and put in the cube and you'll have it the entire time while leveling. This one is really up to you. There's nothing that has a high percentage chance like Necromancer that we covered here on the channel. So Necro has a guaranteed chance to get a multiplier, so you basically should do that. For Wizard, there's really nothing similar. I would definitely just go for Wands and see what you get. You can get the Wand of Woe, which is awesome. Unstable Scepter. The Starfire even does help. The Aether Walker is amazing for speeds and Chan Toto set got buffed significantly this patch. Or you can go for Sources, there's the Triumvirate, Orb of Infinite Depth, there is an Edge Sigil that we talked about, Chan Toto's offhand. There's some stuff here, but there's really nothing for Wizard that is a must have that right away. When you're leveling up, some of the best passives you can grab are like Evocation for Teleport, Power Hungry is a 30% multiplier. You get this at like level 10, it's really powerful. And of course, Astral Presence is gonna give you more resource when you're doing things. Some of the best things you can use is Disintegrate and Convergence. It's a really low cost, 18 arcane power. And I would probably use Ray of Frost, Cold Blood until I get Convergence Disintegrate. It's just really good. It pierces, so it just kind of covers like a huge beam of the map does tons of damage and I would go for that. So you hit 70, you get your four piece bonus and you go through the season journey and all that stuff. Uh, what does the Firebird set do? The two piece basically gives you a cheat death and brings you back to life. And the four piece dealing fire damage with one of your skills causes the enemy to take a thousand weapon damage as fire for three seconds. This can be repeated a second and third time with different skills. So you just basically have to use three different fire skills and the way that we do that is ignite magic weapon does count as one of those three stacks so this is one stack here i'm using black hole with the fire rune and disintegrate convergence so that's one two three fire spells and we're doing three thousand percent damage to the enemy so firebird gets a lot of flack for being one of the weakest starter sets and i mean it kind of is but it is totally easy to play face roll you're going to walk through the gr20 clear you're going to walk through everything in the game the only problem is when you get the six piece 
it only has your big damage bonus when an elite is burning and then the elite burns and dies instantly you lose everything right it's kind of like impale you one shot the enemy you don't get a chance to hit him again to get your resource back so it's kind of like this weird problem where you do too much damage but firebird set is really strong and we'll showcase that here in the video like the necromancer make sure you're there for the mouthio kill so you can get your reapers wraps um, more resources always welcome you can easily craft them with the challenge rift bag and put them on your character i'm not using them here i'm actually not using anything that's going to affect the testing no paragon was used in the making of this video nada nothing nothing about your firebird ignite stacks another thing that does proc it is the two piece so when you die a meteor falls from the sky that fire damage actually is one of the three ignite effects and the combustion rune with archon boom when you click it there's an explosion around your character that actually does proc as well the only reason why i have archon is when things get a little dicey i like to use it to destroy the content so we're going to jump into the gr20 clear i'm going to use my buffs hit him with black hole and then convergence it's just black hole and convergence the whole time if you get in trouble pop archon like i don't like this elite pack up here i'll probably pop archon on him hold the beam down and push your q or your number one ability depending when you go into archon form you have tons of armor and um, it's basically almost like a defensive cooldown is how I use it. This again, we got I think we got Boggets with the Necromancer also. I don't know what uh, these starter videos in Boggets, but yeah. So as you can see, you pop Archon, you do a lot of damage. Let's do another kill. That way, all this whole video is not just like Archon highlight video or something like that. Let's look for another elite. But you can see even the density gets destroyed. Um, Three thousand percent fire damage is really good this early on. So you should have no problem doing your GR20 clear. I finally found another elite pack. I was trying to just do one more kill to show you guys. Um, let's hit them with black hole. Let's jump in here and then ignite them. I didn't want to use, yeah. I didn't want to do both Archon kills. So we almost got frozen there. Let's hit them with these dots. Maybe I'll get procced on purpose just to showcase the, yeah, that's so you can see the meteor hit them and did a lot of damage because it's another ignite stack. Firebird's Finery. Well, that's different, but yeah, it's another elite stack with that, another burning stack. It's not the fastest build on the planet, but it is serviceable and it'll get you to something that you want to play, right? It's not like a slow start. It's just slower compared to the other classes. That clear was with nothing. So if you do a GR1, you'll get a Bane of the Powerful. The first legendary gem you get every season is a Bane of the Powerful. What you're looking at here on screen is what you should be building into. There is a Lawn Frozen Orb version of this which is amazing for bounties and rifts and even like light gr pushing like around gr 100s and the talrasha version and you can even use talrasha with the sage set so i'll have links below for all this stuff but yeah you want to use like the frozen orb for your multi-purpose builds for sage farming for key farming for gr farming there's no reliance on cooldown lots of mobility it's just a really solid speed build overall and i have a link to the video like i did a video on this on the channel it was one of the first ones we did with legacy at nightmares but until then you might have to figure it out you know you might have to make some kind of fire twister sword bear in mind that firebird buffs all fire spells so any multiplier you get you might be able to work with it whether it's an unstable scepter or a death wish anything just use fire spells and you should do well until you get the talrasha or the lawn gear i'll put a link to this in the description this is like a twister wizard type build i'm using the bracers which is really cool you cast a twister and rancer's folly bracer pulls them in on one freaking pixel and they take all the energy twister damage they take all the fire dot instantly it does it's really actually fun to play and probably one of my favorite in terms of firebird speed builds another thing you can play is the freaking chantoto veers build that got buffed this pulse does 4,000 damage and it's really powerful and it's kind of opposite of Frozen Orb where you put cooldown everywhere, but you have like this, you're in God mode, right? You're in a cosmic being of energy and you're just porting around killing everything. So it's also really powerful. It's um, good for all aspects of the game as well. And there are some speed metas you will be playing with this. If I have, ch if I have time, I'm gonna do a video on this build on the channel but i'll definitely put a link in the description for everybody if you want to see what the push build looks like and then you can just use that for literally every aspect of the game like i was saying you can also push with lawn meteor shower an extremely tanky build to play 
and it's really fun and one of my favorites as well. So a lot to choose from. I would definitely watch a lot of videos and kind of see what you guys enjoy the most. Too much to cover. This video would be an hour long, but I just want to give you guys an idea of what you would be building into and the different things that you can play with Wizard this season. Anyway, shout out to our newest patron, Astraeus. Astraeus has been supporting the Twitch stream for a while and now turning his sights on YouTube. So thank you for that, my dude. I really appreciate you supporting the community and everything like that. It means the world to me. I got more videos planned all week. This week warning, one week warning really threw me for a loop, but I'm gonna man up and crank these videos out. Make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. I'll be streaming there all season long, 24 hour stream on launch night. Streaming all weekend, six days a week, full time Diablo over here. This is the bo 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 bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.